Hello and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this. So blinking, let's sing to the tempo. The kick sound is unrelated to this, by the way. It's just, I just left it on because I have my new and improved 808 patch here. If you haven't seen the video yet, please go watch it. There's a free download link so you can get this thing. Okay, so anyways, um, <laughs> let's look at the patch now. So yeah, this is this is a bit of a, a party trick type patch again not not like that essential to making music but but i used this technique in the 808 patch that i just showed you to make the blinking lads on the sequencer steps so in case you want to know how i made it i'm gonna show it now okay so let's jump right in so here i've got 16 formula controllers so because i have 16 steps each one gets its own formula controller and now you might also notice that i have the surface kind of here on the right hand side instead of here and i've only enabled inputs for it so not all of you may know this because these are not enabled by default like in the surface you can also enable inputs so you can connect stuff into the controls here to make them automatically do something. So when you right click here and go inputs and parameters, you have this list where you can select all the options that you want to enable. And if you right click and select, you can actually keep this menu open so that you can select or deselect multiple ones at the same time. But I'm not going to do it now because it's also going to remove the connection. But yeah, just thought that it would be a good tip. Okay, so let's see what is happening in the formula controllers. So I've got this case statement and in here some interesting stuff with the song time is happening. So I'm actually going to start at the opposite end here with the mod operator or modulo modulo. So the purpose of this is to return the remainder of a division. So I've got this other example here, so if you divide 25 by 7, what is the remainder that is left? So you can divide three times and then there's four left and the return value is like 0 0.4. So it's kind of like one decimal point off. So the reason I'm using this here is that I want something to happen whenever this value is divisible by 16. So in other words, this operation is going to return zero. So there's no remainder. So whenever there is a remainder, this is always going to be some number above one. And here I'm subtracting one from it. So this is always going to be one minus one if there is a remainder. So the result is going to be zero. But when there's no remainder, this is going to return zero, and this is gonna be one minus zero. So it'll return one. So this is essentially a way to make this a conditional, to make this like a Boolean operation, to kind of check that whenever there's no remainder, it's gonna return one, and if there is, it's gonna return zero. And what the case statement is actually saying is that it's just checking if song time is at a specific value range. So when it's the first step, it's good enough that song time equals zero. And the basic return value is actually zero because the reason that I'm doing it this way is that the LEDs need to be off when this like like when the song is not playing. So I don't want the first LED to always be burning because if, if it if I did it that way, then the LED would always be on. But I only want it to blink after I start the song. So as soon as song time is even a little bit over zero, this option is going to trigger. So it's going to start doing the um, remainder operation. And in here, I'm scaling the song time a little bit. So this multiplication is essentially just to make this tick a little bit shorter. So if I take this off and compile, you can see that the tick is super long, like the lettuce, lettuce lit up for a long time. But by multiplying this with four, I can actually make it as long as 
the actual step is supposed to be. And now we get to the part of how I actually make them light up consecutively so that not every LED lights the same time. So in this first blinker, I have this minus 0.5, and this is actually just to kind of offset it to light exactly on the first step. So when I took it off, you can actually see that the first light is kind of early, like it's it's a little bit too early. So yeah, when I subtract 0.5, I can actually put it in place. So when it comes to the second light, I have 1.5 here. And in the third LED, I have 2.5 and so on. So it kind of shifts by one step every time. And the reason for that is that I need to kind of move all the rest of the steps into the past so that they will blink at the correct time. So when I'm at the 16th beat, I actually need to offset it by 15 plus the initial 0.5, which I explained earlier, is to just make sure that the light blinks exactly on the step. But yeah, when you think about it, I'm kind of like moving song time. I'm rewinding song time in the formula controller. So it, it, it kind of moves in a different position for each one of these formula controllers. And by the way, this will work in song mode as well because the remainder operation is just gonna keep doing the same thing. So, and you can kind of even see it here. This is the step section of the value and it will just repeat from zero to 16. But yeah, I think that's everything for this video. There will be a download link to this patch in the description. And yeah, like this video, leave a comment and tell me what you thought about it and I will see you in the next one.